Okay, it's me again, giving you a somewhat broader version of the lab. Sorry about too much of the ceiling, but uh, in order to catch me up here, uh, that's kind of the way that I decided to, to set it up. Uh, I, Professor McDarby, I've been doing this for a really, really long time, uh, teaching college, that is. I think rather, I'm going to take some of the ceiling away by tilting the camera a bit, and then I will sit down and talk to you. Uh, I've worked outside of college. I've worked in factories, I've worked in retail, uh, I've sold vacuum cleaners. Um, I, I, this will tell you how old I am. I have um, delivered milk door to door. Uh, nobody's done that in a really, really long time. But I also have a job now that I really love that's based on having a college degree. And I like to talk to my students about why a college degree is considered to be important by people that are looking to hire you. There's the obvious. There's earning power over a lifetime. You're gonna make a lot more money with a college degree than you will uh, without one for most jobs. Uh, there's a bunch of jobs you can't get without a college degree, so there's entry issues. Uh, there's a lot of jobs that you can get without a college degree, but if you want to advance, if you want a promotion, you're gonna need a college degree for the promotion. But I wanna talk more about what a college degree in pretty much anything gives in terms of um, what I like to call expected value. This is what a, um, an employer thinks they're getting from you with your college degree. And I will tell you, having been on a number of uh, committees where we talk to employers, uh, one commonality, common theme that comes up over and over and over again is that they basically will say to us, um, can you, um, can you get them to show up on time? Can you get them to show up every day? Is that this is a problem we have with employees? And they do believe that if you don't show up for class, we don't force you to show up for class the way that they do for high school. We don't send you know, legal representatives after you if you're not coming to class. We just flunk, your, uh, flunk you in the course. They want that regularity. They want that habit. And they think that a college degree tells them that you have that habit. Now, as uh, pe people that have been in college for a while uh, or been in college in the past can tell you that uh, there are some classes that absolutely require you to be there every single class. You get like, you know, X number of misses and then you just fail the course. And they go, what is this, high school? Well, no, it's not because we don't send anybody after you. You have to do this on your own. And it is a valuable, I don't know if I want to call it a skill, but it's a valuable attribute that, uh, that employers do want from people with those degrees. Now, I'm in the sciences. I don't really tend to, uh, I make people show up for the labs, but for the rest of it, uh, I figure you can get the work done. Uh, you can get the work done. And in science, that often is true, where they don't really care what hours you're keeping in the lab as long as you're getting the lab work done. But in a lot of jobs in the world, uh, you may not be punching a clock, but you're expected to be in the office for X amount of hours from this time to that time. And uh, being able to do that is, uh, is, is a valuable skill, if nothing else. Um, speaking of time, you get assignments in, in college. You gotta do this. Go off and write a paper, is it? Make sure you get this in. Time management, your ability to manage your own time on your own and get stuff done. Hit a deadline is, again, another skill that a college degree seems to suggest you already have. Uh, and that's, that's really, really valuable. Uh, in, now, people have taken classes, you know, some classes are very, very structured, and it's like, give me the first part, give me the second part, give me the third part, give me the fourth part. And there are jobs that are going to be that way, too, where they're going to want every bit along the way. But then there's got to be jobs that are more like my class, where I go, you got a paper due a month and a week from now, is that I'll, you know, any help you need along the way, come in and ask, and I'll help you. But I'm not, you know, you're on your own. Get it done. 
here's all the rules you got to follow in order to get the paper done. If none of them are clear, again, come in, we'll clear it up. But get it done, hit the deadline. And that is uh, something that, that, uh, that a lot of jobs very, very, very much require. Part of that, your ability to go off and find information. Oh, we got to do this. Go, go figure out what the code, you know, uh, the code requirements are. Go figure out, uh, you know, what, what was done last year or um, what sort of grant proposals are being taken in here or how do, the, how do these forms get, uh, get taken in? You know, what, what gets people to look at this? And, yeah, there's all sorts of information you're, you're set out to find and a lot of times to evaluate. Is that, yeah, we got to put this into bid, but we do have the opportunity to turn down uh, businesses that maybe are not have not done such a great job in the past. Go find out who those are before we get any of these bids in. And so, how do you find that information? How do you know if you're getting good information? You're obviously not going to look at the uh, the uh, sources from the businesses themselves. Uh, who can give you reliable information on who's a good business and a reliable business? Evaluation, evaluating the information that you're getting. The internet is a huge trove of information. I don't know what fraction of it is, is crap, but it's a huge fraction of it. And being able to sort through and decide what's a good, what's good and what's bad is, uh, is a really, really important skill in an awful lot of jobs. Another thing they think you, they, you get with your college degree, you can learn stuff and retain it. Sometimes in the short term, we need to do this job, figure out how to do it. A year later, I don't care if you remember any of it. And here's how we do this job. We expect you to do this right. And, you know, here's our training manual. Here's the uh, you know, two hours of training we're going to give you. And, uh, and good luck with this. So your ability to learn and retain information, sometimes in the short term, sometimes in the long term, actually is something that you wind up having to do. So everybody says, I don't know why I got to study for all these tests or you know, whatever kind of testing you're getting, uh, you may not get multiple choice out in the real world, maybe you do, uh, but, uh, but you, will get, uh, you will get tested. You will get tested repeatedly. And you will be expected to be able to um, read and follow uh, directions. As I always say to my students that, that the bottom line of a lab science class comes down to how well do you follow directions. If you follow directions well, the lab class is easy. We're not making this really, really tricky for you. But you gotta be able to read and follow directions. Uh, and if you're not, that's not so good. Another aspect of this, taking notes. I know it seems like a very academic thing to do, but I can't tell you how many times I've gone to meetings with my little notebook. I, I, you know, I don't bring my laptop, I bring my notebook and scribble stuff down. And my ability to, to take the notes that I need, be able to look at something later and understand what it says, is unique to me. Is that everybody's retention is different. So one of the skills you're learning that you will use, I know it seems crazy, but you will use, you will take notes and you will need to be able to refer to those notes later and know how it all works. Uh, so again, what seems like a silly college skill actually can be a very valuable real world skill. And I should mention, you know, all of these things that I'm given on the list are not gonna apply to every college class that you take and in the same way it's not gonna apply to every job you potentially could have. Uh, but taking a bunch of different college classes gives you some flexibility. Anybody that you know, and you if you've had a bunch of jobs, you know how varied supervisory approaches are. You know, this boss, that boss, he wants, he's a micromanager. He's on my back all the time in order to you know, try to make sure I'm doing everything exactly the right way. Oh, he just kind of lets us go. But man, if it doesn't work, he'll, he gets on us. Is that, uh, you know, this is a yeller, this is a, uh, a suggester, this one makes me feel like a, like a, a you know, a disappointed parent. Uh, this one gives me great feedback. This one tells me almost nothing. Is that you're gonna get that in all sorts of college classes too. Is that uh, uh, one thing we're seeing in college is um, kind of a movement toward more uniformity, uh, especially with the remote stuff. 
let's all try to do it the same way. I think that very much undercuts what a college degree is supposed to give you. I think your ability to adapt to these different crazy people. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna run into when you're out there in the real world. I do know the sort of supervisors that I've had. I do know the super supervisors that relatives of mine have had and, and they do vary widely. Uh, and it is something that, it is some of a, somewhat of a skill. I don't know that that's what necessarily what they're looking for, but it's a skill that you're gonna need uh, to survive long term. Because the idea of, of people getting a job and working at that same job for you know, decades is uh, very unusual. Uh, you know, my job and not a heck of a lot of other ones. A lot involved in this too is communication. We send you out to find something out. Can you come back and tell us in a way where number one, we understand it. And number two, you've been talking for an hour and we're all sitting there in the room going, you gotta cover this in 10 minutes and we wouldn't have to be sitting here listening to this. And I've already lost track of what you said in the first 10 minutes. So communication, not just being able to, to clearly communicate verbally uh, is, a, is a good skill to be able to, to abbreviate, but not too much, mm. uh, is good. Here's a skill that's, that's kind of new, the ability to communicate digitally and not embarrass yourself. This is a bad one because, now I'm a visual thinker, is that that's the only thing that makes me a really good writer in terms of form. I, I spell right, I, I, my grammar's fine, I see grammar visually. Uh, but a lot of people are not visual thinkers and that tends to make them not the greatest spellers in the world. But we visual people are all over the place. And a lot of us visual people see bad spelling as an indictment on your character. Ah, you couldn't, look at all these misspellings. Is it, what's wrong with that? We don't realize that it just has to do with the way you process information. But you need to be aware of that. And I know that uh, a lot of our digital communication is very immediate, you know, typing out an email, typing out a text. But if you can get yourself so that you're competent with spelling and, and being able to communicate clearly uh, in a very quick digital form, it's not writing reports like it used to be, uh, that can go a long way toward uh, the attitudes that people have that maybe you've never even met face to face. There may be a supervisor who's got to clear your promotions way up the chain, who've looked at your emails and gone, they do good work, really? Because I've been looking at their emails and their emails suggest that they're a bit of a dunce. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the way sometimes you come across to, you know, idiots like me who, uh, who can't help but see a misspelled word or something that's not presented in a, in, a, in a really clear way. Another thing that this remote stuff is horrible for is collaboration. And again, you don't get this in every class, you don't get this in every job, but most people, if they've gone through a, a four-year degree, maybe a two-year degree, um, they've had to work in teams. They've had to work with lab partners. They've, they've had to collaborate, work together to get something done. And uh, they've had to be civil enough to not completely blow up the group. Uh, a really, really valuable skill in the real world where you often are expected to work with uh, people and groups. And uh, sometimes you're the, 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 the grunt and sometimes you're the boss, but uh, to be able to be both is, is, is a very, very good skill. Part of that too is, uh, and this is difficult on every level, the ability to know where the help is and how to access, <coughs> excuse me, the help when you need the help. Is it at this level, I always tell my students, they need help, come see me, I will help them. But I'm this old grizzled, somewhat grumpy college professor and I know a lot of them just are nervous they just don't feel comfortable coming and asking me for help and uh, you know I've had bosses that I, I uh, back when I was before I went back to college is I had bosses that, that I would go was kind of scared of that I, I you know I would force myself to go talk to but uh, but it, it was a, a real job to to be able to get the help 
It was just, you know, the little voice in my head going, well, if you don't get the help, you're going to screw this up. So you better go get the help. And fortunately, by the time I got back to college, I had worked for a while. I was older than the other students. Uh, I was well on my way to being grizzled and grumpy. And, uh, and I had no problem going to somebody I had never met with an expertise that I needed and, uh, and, and listening to, me, to them grumble at me when I, uh, I don't even remember the question I had, but we had a guy in, in my graduate school who uh, was, um, I mean, he was retired and, and because of the amount of money he had, they'd given him a whole floor uh, uh, at the, in the biology building as his private labs because they expected him to leave him a lot of money when he died. And, but he was old and grumpy. And, uh, and it went, you, what do you mean you've never taken, I was a parasite biologist, what do you mean you've never taken microbiology? Well, it's bacteria, it's, you know, it's not my deal. Oh yeah, but you really, you know, and you just listen to him complain and complain and complain, go, yeah, but this is the information that I need. And eventually, you know, he, he gave me the information that I needed. Uh, and you run into those kinds of encounters that make you less inclined to do it again when you need to do it again but it is a tremendously useful skill. It will get you through a lot of problems in life, in work, in college. So uh, that is again, uh, a kind of embedded in uh, an awful lot of college degrees. And now you know why you don't necessarily need a degree in a particular field for people in that field to think that that college degree may mean something to them is that uh, my wife is a very high-powered computer person with a degree in English. And she absolutely is convinced that that degree in English is a huge amount of her success in the world because it trained her to do certain things uh, that a lot of people coming out with just a, a straight-up computer degree, uh, which barely existed back then, uh, they don't get. Uh, in Japan a few years ago, the, uh, the business community was snatching up all the science graduates because they were convinced that, that having to get through science programs trained you in a way of thinking that were going to make you very valuable finance people. So there's cross-connectivity, and again, a degree suggests certain abilities, certain skills, and that's why it is a good thing to have. Thank you.